All right, in this video, we are going to talk about reflection, refraction, and diffraction. First one is probably the simplest to understand, and that's reflection. When light is reflecting off of a surface, it's kind of the same thing as like a ball reflecting at a wall, where because of the conservation of um, like energy and momentum, whatever angle the ball hits the wall at, it's going to be the same angle that it comes off of the wall at. Okay? And, and so it's a, probably the law of reflection to me always seems like this is the easiest law to remember of anything because it's just two things are equal to each other. So for the law of reflection, I don't know why I don't, oops, ah, didn't mean to do that. Um, I don't know why it isn't just written on this slide, but um, well, I guess it's there. Uh, it is written in, in print, but in just a formula, the law of reflection says the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Okay. Now this is for a um, this. When you're looking at that angle, this is for like a flat surface and the light rays come in and they'll go out at the same angle and this angle is measured off of the normal. So the normal is a line perpendicular to the surface. Okay. Where that gets a little bit um, messed up is when your surface isn't smooth you might have parallel rays coming in like the ones depicted over here on the right that because they're hitting a bumpy surface get reflected off in all different angles and if you look at each surface and you measure the normal that all of these different things are being hit on they're all following the law of reflection they're all bouncing off the same angle that, it, that they're incident with but because the surface is bumpy their incident angles all vary slightly, even though they're parallel rays. So that leads to two different types of reflection. We got regular reflection when we have a very smooth surface like a mirror. And then we have diffuse reflection, which is like when um, you have light bouncing off a wall. So you, light bounces off the wall, and that's how you're able to see the wall when the lights are on. But you can't see yourself in the wall. Now, if you have a waxed floor and you can see the glare in the floor, that's kind of partially regular reflection. That's what the glare part is and partially diffuse reflection. And so um, whenever you have a glare on something, that's kind of, again, some mixture of the two. And it just depends on the smoothness of the surface and what percentage of the parallel light rays will bounce off and remain parallel. The next behavior of light that we're going to talk about is refraction of light. So when light goes from one material to another material, it's bent or refracted. And that's because light travels at different speeds in different materials. And so what happens is a good way to kind of picture what's going on is if you imagine that I have some wheels that are on a fixed axle that are traveling in the direction of this ray of light. And once they encounter the boundary, this first wheel, when it encounters the boundary, will slow down. Whereas this other wheel over here will remain at the same speed for a little bit. And that'll cause the entire wheel and axle to rotate, um, giving you this new angle of travel. Okay? When you are going from uh, a, in this case, you're going from a fast, where a material that light travels fast in, to a material where light travels slow in, and you always bend towards the normal. So when you go from fast to slow, you bend towards the normal. 
And if you're going from slow to fast, you go away from the normal. Okay, so refraction gives you all sorts of interesting um, occurrences that can happen. Like if you look into a fish tank, you might see, if you're looking on like from the corner, you might see two fish when there's really only one. Or um, for example, if you put a pole into water, which is being seen here. So here's our surface of the water. The pole looks bent. So the reason why the pole looks bent, because the pole doesn't actually bend, of course, when it goes into the water. It actually keeps going straight in, okay? I mean, it actually goes much deeper than that, probably. So when the light from the pole leaves the pole and then bends away, your light or your eye always and your mind always believes that light came to your eye in a straight line. And so you see a bent image because your eyes, your mind is thinking that light came to you in a straight line. And so you're seeing it not where it actually is, but where it looks like because of the direction of light travel. And I don't know if I did the best job um, drawing there. I probably bent the light too much um, for that picture because I would put the pole more over like this. Okay. But we'll, we'll see some examples of that in lab also. So again, um, that's refraction. For determining how much something refracts, uh, you can use a formula. I'm just going to rewrite it in this form because this is my favorite form to use it because it's, I think, the easiest one to remember. Use what's called the index of refraction for the material times the sign of the angle that it was incident at equals the index of refraction of the refracted material times the sign of the angle that it refracts at. Okay. So this is, uh, that's the equation to use when you, for figuring out um, angles with refraction. For doing calculations, it'll be helpful to have a table like this one here, which I know is a little bit hard to read. Important ones, air has an index of refraction of one, and that's because the speed of light in air is very close to the speed of light in a vacuum. Diamond is a good one to know. Um, that's one of the most optically dense materials, so it has the highest, well, higher incidence of refraction, so at 2.42. Glass, there's a couple different versions of glass depending on what um, what sort of glass you're talking about. I usually just stick with glass being about 1.5 for my calculations, which is closest to the um, crown glass. Uh, for water, I go ahead and know is 1.33, okay? So those are, are good numbers to have. The index of refraction is based on the speed of light in that material. So the N is the index of refraction, C is the speed of light, and VS is the velocity in that substance. So the slower, uh, the slower light goes in that material, the larger the index of refraction. So light is pretty, is reasonably slow in diamond. Okay. One thing that interesting that can happen is if you have two materials that have really similar index indices of refraction. Pause that for a second. So if you have two materials where you have really similar indices of refraction, you can actually make it look like one disappears in another. So we'll watch just a little bit of that video here. I'd like to ask you to focus your attention on this yellow liquid that I have in this flask. And I have also a beaker of this size and a bigger beaker. What I want to do is put well, this Actually, I want to add some more. <laughs> so I went too far. All of it is in there. Okay. One and just pour the liquid in there because I want to fill it up very carefully, all the way to the top. Actually, I want to add some more. <laughs> so all of it is in there. All of it is in there. You see that? Okay. So you can see it becomes really hard to see that 
beaker inside the beaker, okay? So you can certainly look this up and watch the rest of the video. It's, it's kind of fun. Okay. One thing that can happen with refraction, and we saw this in our exploration activities, you can have what's called total internal reflection. So because as um, you're going from a more dense to a less dense material, the refracted light bends away from the normal, you can get to a point where that bend would be over 90 degrees, so more than the surface, and at that point the light bends or actually ends up reflecting back into the material as can be seen in this picture here, where the light comes in and because refracting out would require an angle greater than 90, it can actually escape and ends up turning around back into the material. Okay, so this happens, the first time this happens, the light will totally internally reflect at any angle greater than what's called the critical angle. And the formula for the critical angle is here, where xd is the critical angle itself. You're going to take the inverse sine of the ratio of refracted index of refraction to the incident index. And that will give you what the critical angle for a material is. Refraction can give us some interesting effects. So one effect of refraction is the mirage. So what happens with the mirage is air travels at slightly different speeds in warm air compared to cool air. So that causes light to bend. So again, you got the light coming off of the boat here, enters your eyes. Your eyes, your brain assumes that light traveled to it in a straight line. And so it traces the lines back. And so even though boat really is here, you're going to see an image of it above. So that's called a superior image. You can also get an inferior image when you have warm air below cool air where the light bends the other way and so you see things below um, where they normally look. And an inferior image is what you're seeing on the pavement uh, when you travel down the road and you see that wet spot that keeps moving ahead of you. The other cool effect that you get with um, Refraction is the dispersion of light. It turns out that, yes, light bends as it goes from one material to the next, but not all colors of light bend at the same. So the higher the wavelength of the light, the more it bends. And so this leads us to uh, the rainbow, the spectrum coming off of prisms and the rainbows we see in the air. So what happens is um, to get a rainbow, you always have to have the sun has to be somewhere behind you. You have to have water droplets in the air in front of you. And a rainbow in that case will always form in an arc that takes up about 42 degrees off of your um, straight line of sight, which is the anti-solar point. If the sun's directly behind you, the anti-solar point is what would be directly ahead of you. So what happens in a rainbow is sunlight comes into the water droplet. It first refracts into the water droplet. The blue and the red light refract at slightly different angles. And then they internally reflect off the back of the water droplet and then come back down uh, and then refract again. The blue light exits up a little bit higher than the red light, uh, but because you're not but because the red light comes out a little bit lower than the blue light, the red light you see is a little bit above. So the water droplets that you see red from are a little bit above the water droplets that you're seeing blue come from. Okay, So that's um, looking at how a rainbow is made. Got to real quick get to the last thing we're going to look at is diffraction. And we'll do a lab on diffraction. What diffraction is, is whenever you pass a wave, so we've got our wave, these are the different like waves fronts. Whenever they pass through a narrow opening, they get bent um, or curved by that narrow opening. And then those curves overlap, and so you get areas of constructive interference, and you also get areas of destructive interference. And what that leads to is a pattern of bright and dim spots uh, where you so the bright spots where we have constructive interference and the dim spots where you have destructive interference. And this formula here, I believe, is called Bragg's Law. Uh, and we'll be using that when dealing with diffraction.